Hi Flastube! Welcome back to my channel. It has been a while since I've been here. Um, I think my last video was in June and today is December 30th, 2022. So I really wanted to get a video in before the end of the year and nothing like waiting till the last minute. <laughs> And of course the sun is already set, so I don't have very good lighting. I've got the overhead light on, which is why you can see, maybe I should turn the lights off. <laughs> <Okay>. I'm <kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> you're not here to see me, you're here to see, see my stitching anyway, right? So it's all good. Um, Yeah, so it's been a while since I've done a video. Um, I don't know. I suppose there's a lot of reasons for that. Mainly, I've just been pretty busy. So my job is keeping me extremely busy. Um, I feel like I've worked <laughs> pretty much every weekend for the last couple months. And hopefully, I'm on the verge of catching up <laughs> and things will get a little better. But the bad part of that is it kind of keeps me away from stitching and if I'm perfectly honest, I, I, you, I lose my stitchy bug um, usually towards the end of summer and that kind of happened this year. So I don't have a ton of things to show you, but I do have some finishes and a couple whips and a lot of plans. So I like the plans videos. I've been, I've watched a couple this week and I'm gonna go through my plans. Um, I'm not very good at keeping plans. <laughs> I, I like to make lists and I like to make plans, but I'm not always great at keeping them. So that's that. Um, what's new? Not much. I have really been sick the last couple of months. Um, it feels like that anyway. I got a pretty nasty cold right before Thanksgiving. I got better. I had two weeks where I was feeling fine. And then right before Christmas, I got a respiratory infection. And so I've been feeling a little crummy. <laughs> so I'm still got a small cough, but I think for the most part, that's gone away. So if I get into a coughing fit, I'll try to edit that out. Because nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> Want to see my stitching? Let's start with finishes. First up, I have these. So if you are new to my channel, welcome. <laughs> and if you're returning, then you will remember that I also welcome. I love that people come back and watch my videos and you guys are always so sweet. You leave the nicest comments. Um, <coughs> but last this year I was stitching a monthly series. So I was stitching one a month and the pattern I was is from Crosetta Gogo. -Go. I don't remember the pattern name. I'll try to link that below. But it was a series that I made into these little pillows and I finished all 12. So my last video was in um, July. So here's July. Um, of course, they're not in any order. August, the little koala bear. September, cute hedgehog, September, October, what's the owl, I love these, aren't they cute, November, was the raccoon, and December was the bear. They're so cute and I did, if I do pat myself on the back, <laughs> I wanted to stitch one a month so that I would have them as my month markers on Instagram. 
and I managed to do that. So I finished the series. They're all FFO'd into little pillows. Um, they've all just got different colored gingham fabric on the back and then some lady dots trim in various colors around them. So love those. And then for 2023, I decided that I want to do another series. So I went through my stash and I settled on, well, hello there from Hands On Design. So here's the 12 patterns. My plan is to stitch at least one a month. And okay. I have already finished January. So these come, well, they don't come with, but you can purchase button packs from just another button company that coordinate with these. So this is January, finished as a little pillow with date lazy dots, um, pom pom trim. And then the back is a same, same gingham fabric. And I have also already finished February. So I am ahead of the game. I used a pink on the back, the red lady dots, lady dots. And so I got a little bit ahead <laughs> because these are very easy to stitch and they are, I was enjoying it. So I was like, why stop if I'm enjoying it? And it's a great travel project. Um, I take them to work with me and during my lunch break or if I'm on a conference call or whatever that I can get away stitching. <clears throat> I, these are great for that. So I've started, it'll focus, March. So here's what March will look like. It, got, it has the little frog button. I'm stitching all of these on 32 count Lugana with the call for DMC and I have all the button packs. So they should all be finished the same. And then for Christmas, I finally got a dough bowl. <laughs> so here's my January stitching. Here's the Crosetta. Hello January. And then this is a Lizzie Kate that I did a couple years ago. I have another hands-on design, the little year celebrations. And I know that I stitched January, but I can't find it. <laughs> it's tucked away it's tucked away somewhere safe. But I love this little doble. I do think it probably needs some kind of little embellishments, maybe. But I'm looking forward to having those out on display this year. So I can't decide if I want to leave them at home and just have them set up here or maybe take them to my office and leave them on my desk there. So I haven't quite decided that yet, <laughs> but either way, I'm happy to have them finally have a dough ball and a monthly display that I can swap out. So I'm excited for that. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Other finishes. So I did a couple of classes this year. Um, the first was from the Primitive Hair, Isabella. I don't remember her last name. She is the designer behind the Primitive Hair. Um, she was the Sampler Guild of Georgia sponsored her to come over from Italy and teach a class. And this was the class project. It's the Tybee Island Mermaid. And here is my finish. So Tybee Island is um, an island off the Georgia coast down in South Georgia, and they have a lighthouse down there. So that's the Tybee Island lighthouse. And then inside, it's a needle book with the mermaid and then these are pins that she was selling that coordinated so of course I bought those and really cute this took forever though <laughs> this took me forever to stitch I feel like it took me two months to stitch this and it's not that big it's just 
filling this in, like filling in this water seemed to take forever. And then this fabric, so it was a kit for the class and the fabric they gave us, this is, there's like maybe half an inch of seam allowance on here. So I stitch in a Q-snap and so trying to get this fabric in a Q-snap and comfortably stitch it was hard. <laughs> I ended up actually stitching part of it in hand, which is outside my comfort zone and I'm not good at it, but it just took forever. And then here's the little um, scissor fob. <coughs> but it was cute, it was a two day class. Um, it didn't take our two days to show us how to finish all that, but and I didn't actually finish it in class. I brought it home because I found it was easier to just hook it up to my sewing machine and finish it that way rather than hand sew it in the class. So I used the class as just a, like a mini retreat. <laughs> and I took some other projects and I just stitched and listened to Isabella talk and just socialized with some of the ladies in the guild. And it was a great weekend. So that was a lot of fun. And then in early December, it was the Jingle Ball, which hopefully you've heard about the Jingle Ball. Um, it was an online, I guess, retreat, <laughs> if you will, that was um, put on by Lindy Stitches and she had 12 designer friends come in to kind of help her with it. And I spent too much money on charts because they were all great and I was lucky enough to get into three of the classes. The first class was with Erica Michaels, um, Linda, her name's not Erica, Linda from Erica Michaels, um, showed us how to finish the little um, berries that she designs. Um, we didn't have a class project, it was literally just her showing us taking a step-by-step -step through how to finish a berry. And it's not as hard as I thought it was gonna be. So one of my goals for 2023 is to stitch and finish a berry. I think I can do it. <laughs> so I'm gonna give it a shot and that is one of my goals. So that was a lot of fun. And then I also got into, this is Best Sill from Summer House Stitch Works, A Crowning Glory where we finished these boxes. Inside is a little velvet cushion that we made. And then you finish the box by just, she, it's, um, it was a kit, so some antique paper and you cut it out and glue it onto the box. And then the stitching part was this crown. So I stitched that up, um, I think it was a 32 count, um, maybe mocha linen. And then you finish it in this little antique crown at the bottom. So super cute. So then that nestles in the little velvet cushion inside the box. <laughs> I love it. I think it's one of the cutest things. And then I also, Beth Twist, so there's Beth Sill from Summer House. <coughs> Excuse me. And then Beth Twist from Heartstring Samplery did a pin making class. And these are the pins that I made. So these are way easier than I thought they would were to put together. You literally just glue beads onto these pins and then and they're super cute. I'm a, I'm kind of really into the counting pins these days. And that class was fun. Making them is easy and fun. And I think that might be what I do this year for StitchCon. We'll see how much time I have, but I do plan on going back to StitchCon this year. I'm registered for Weekend B, so 
if you're there, hopefully I'll see you and we can stitch together. <coughs> but I think little counting pins are always a good little giveaway and as easy as they are to make, I might be looking at that. Um, my next finish was from Little House Needleworks. These are one of her petite series. These are the fall petites. So there's fall. Flowers. A barn. Are they cute? Um, these wood blocks, I forget who the seller is. Is it Scarlet? It's not Scarlet Sky. It's one of the woodcutters. Um, but they're great. They come, oops, they come pre-made with the backing fabric. So all you have to do is stick your stitching on it. I wish that if I do this again, <laughs> I would mount my stitching on something before I glue it down. But I didn't realize that before I cut it. So <laughs> It's fine. I do think these need a bow or something on them. So as soon as I make it back to out to a craft store, <laughs> then I will get some bows for that. And then my last cross stitch finish, I finished last night um, and I started it on Wednesday. So it was a really quick finish. I, while I was at work on Wednesday, for some reason, I couldn't stop thinking about how I needed a New Year's stitch. And I wanted something that maybe I could finish on New Year's that would be quick and easy. Well, I found a pattern on Etsy. Oh, I don't know who the seller is. I will link it below. But it was maybe a little too quick of a stitch. <laughs> Here it is. It'll focus. I'm having a hard time focusing today. There's a little penguin it says Happy New Year. I finished it just as a little pillow, thinking that it would I could tuck it into my do double for um the first part of January. I just used a red polka dot and then this trim, which is this so festive and so works for New Year's. I picked this up from Purple Purple Paper Mountain on Etsy. Um, I bought a bunch of trims from them earlier this year and so I had this in my stash and it works perfect for the little New Year's. So Happy New Year! <laughs> it's cute. Those are my cross stitch finishes. So not a ton for as much time as it's been, but you know, every finish counts. I have been doing a lot of non cross stitch projects. So I signed up, I think it was early September. There's a local company or it's really just a lady that owns a um, small business where she makes chunky blankets. And she holds workshops where she teaches you how to make the blankets. And so I signed up for that. And this is it. This is the blanket that I made during the class. So when you pay for the class, you get the yarn and instructions. It takes about, about four hours to finish this blanket. It's really a throw. <coughs> but... It was super fun and since then I have made, I've got a red and white one that I made for Christmas out in my living room. I made one for a gift for someone this year and then I have this one sitting over here that is a work in progress and I think I'm getting better at them and I'm getting a little bit quicker but a couple weeks ago um, I stopped at Hobby Lobby for something and they had that yarn on sale. I think it was 30% off, so it wasn't a great sale, but 
it was on sale. <laughs> so I bought some more. So I fully intend on the new year to make a couple more blankets and they're just fun. And like the, I gifted it to my dental hygienist, <laughs> which she's actually good friends, but she loved it. And I mean, who doesn't like getting a blanket? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that, especially when the U.S. goes through a cold snap. Uh, I need a drink. I should have grabbed something other than a Coke. <laughs> That's fine. Um, one of the other things I finished, I think I showed you this kit when I got it. It came from Kathy. I don't... I'm gonna, I'll try to remember to link her below too. But she is part of Linen and Scraps on Floss Tube. And earlier this year, I think back in July, she sold these kits to make these scissor holders. So I finally stained my block and put my Santas on there. And it probably needs a little bit of embellishment, but I haven't done that. But super fun and really quite easy. So I would like to make more of those. So I've been kind of on a hunt to find some blocks because I don't have anyone that can cut them for me. So I'm on the lookout for them. And when I find them, I fully intend to make some more of those because they're cute little doodads to have around. <laughs> and then a couple weeks ago, you're gonna have to excuse this because one of my dogs is in trouble over it, but I, there's a local yarn shop that is not far from my house and they're offering some classes and one of them was for needle felting. Um, I've always wanted to do needle felting and so I signed up for the class and the class was to make an ornament for your tree, a needle felted ornament. And this is, this was, <laughs> is my ornament. So I took this off the tree earlier and had it setting in here while I was getting stuff ready to make this video. One of the dogs got it <laughs> and have torn pieces off of it. And this gray part was on top here. So he managed to mess that part up. I think I can fix it. So when I signed up for the class, uh, you come home with an ornament and then you have enough material that you come home with to make another ornament, probably two more ornaments really. And so I have some extra material, so I think I can fix this. Or if not, I'll chalk it up to a learning experience and I've got the supplies to make another one before next Christmas. So, <laughs> I don't know, they're such bad dogs. <coughs> but I enjoyed the needle felting class so much that I bought two more kits. This one is to make felted hearts. So you get all those different colors of felt and you can make the hearts which I think are super cute. And then I also bought this one to make Easter eggs. So these kits are super nice. They come with, this one comes with all the felt that you need to make it. And it's even got the needles. It did come home with the needles from the class, but they're nice little kits. And I look forward to kind of getting better at that. So I did struggle a little bit in class. <laughs> I felt like I was struggling. I think it was because there were a couple women in the class that I don't know if they'd done needle felting before or they were just picked up on it pretty quick, but they seemed to get it <laughs> really quick. And so I felt like I was behind the whole class, but that's okay. I'm learning. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. Hopefully I can edit this out. I'm 
those are my finishes. I just have a couple whips. Well, I have a lot of whips in here, but I've just a couple that I've been working on this month. The first is from the Jingle Ball. This is Lindy Stitches Peppermint Candy. I think this was the Jingle Ball exclusive, which I'm sure are going to go on sale to everybody next year. But here's where I am on it. All these little cute motifs. I'm stitching this with all the called for. So this is 32 count chai linen from Seraphin Fabrics. And then the floss is a mix of Forbidden Fiber Company, Classic Color Works, Weeks, and then I think there's a DMC. I think the white might be a DMC. But I ordered the thread pack and the fabric and stuff from Lindy Stitches. So I'm finding that that's how I like to order things these days is if I'm going to order a pattern, I want the full kit. <laughs> so... That's what I feel like most of my purchases have been recently have just been the full kit. The full kit or I don't want it. <laughs> Which gets expensive and I need to stop doing that because I have a ton of fabric and I have a ton of floss and I can totally kit stuff up myself but it's just so much easier when it's all comes kitted and <laughs> I gotta stop. Um... My next whip also came as a kit. This is from Caterpillar Cross Stitch. The, um, the pattern is from Stitch Rovia. All is bright. So Caterpillar Cross Stitch does club boxes once a month. And I signed up specifically for this pattern because I loved it. And... This is where I am on it. So the club kit comes with all the floss, a 14 count Ada. This one came with the needle minder and then some extra little goodies in it. I swapped out the 14 count Ada for 40 count Verdal. Um, so that's what I'm stitching it on. I should have never put it down, but I get sidetracked. But Definitely, this is one that I want to finish before next Christmas. <coughs> Sorry. Goodness gracious. I was doing all right with the coughing today, too. Okay. Now we're going into my New Year plans. So my 2023 plans... First up, I decided that I want to have a finish on New Year's Day, and I prepped for it, <laughs> and I might even get this done like right after midnight because I literally have one letter left and <laughs> it'll be done. So what I am stitching is my, I guess, word of the year. I don't know if it'll be word of the year or word of the moment, but my word is unsubscribe. So all I have left is the E. Um, I pulled the letters out of this book. So there's some alphabets back in the back of this that I used. And I am stitching it with it looks black, but it's actually Midnight Cobalt from the Thread Gather a Silk. Maybe. Is that going to focus? It's a dark navy blue silk. But, <coughs> excuse me. So unsubscribe. I, I don't know why it struck me that it needs to be my word of the year. I think it started earlier this month in early December. The state of Georgia had a runoff election for our um, state senator. Um, and it was a lot. <laughs> I got a lot of junk 
from both junk mail, um, text messages, phone calls, emails from both candidates. And all I wanted to do was stop it and may and unsubscribe and make it stop. And so that's kind of, I think what prompted the word and why it was like kind of stuck in my head. And then the more and more I thought about it, um, unsubscribe just kind of is what I want to do going into the new year, both literally like cleaning out my inboxes and getting rid of all that junk, but also getting rid of kind of the junk thoughts that or the disruptive thoughts maybe that cloud my brain and especially at my job have been making me feel really like I don't know what the word for it is. <laughs> I've been doubting myself a lot at work and I don't know why I'm doing that. I know that I'm qualified for my job and I don't know why I have have these just kind of destructive thoughts that, you know, they really mess with my mental state and they're part of the reason that I've been so stressed out lately. I mean, to the point where I'm not sleeping very well and, you know, all that junk. And so I really want to go into 2023 just kind of unsubscribing to all that nonsense and just to having a better perspective about things. And I also am so tired of being sick. <laughs> so I, I don't remember the last time I took the dogs for a walk. Um, one, because I haven't felt like it. And two, it's been cold, but the weather's finally breaking. I finally feel like I'm getting past this infection. I'm getting past this cold. So we're going to go into the new year. Not really with like a, you know, it's not like a fitness goal that a lot of people set going into the new year. It's more just getting back on track to where I'm getting some fresh air and some exercise and clearing my head and getting rid of just that stuff, you know? I think you guys know what I'm talking about. But, so, unsubscribe. I'm gonna finish this on New Year's Day. I have, this is just a 32 count scrap of linen that I had in my stash. And I love stitching on it. <laughs> it's probably why I kept it. And so, I was looking around last night and I'm sorry, I'm gonna leave these in the I'm gonna leave these in the package, but this is from Hands on Design. It's the Pocket Neighborhood. She sold these. I don't know if they're available to everybody, but they were for sale at the Jingle Ball. So there's the Pocket Neighborhood and then there's kind of a cord meeting pattern, which is the house next door scissor fob which uses all the same colors. These are small and I think I measured last night and I will have enough of this fabric left to stitch those on. So that's my plan with the scrap piece of fabric. We'll use it all. <laughs> and then my word I'm gonna cut out and hang up in my office. I also, I'm a little bit obsessed with the Little Words projects. Um, if you don't know what they are, they're little bracelets that won't focus. <laughs> but I have a bunch of them and I had them make me one that says unsubscribe that I can wear into the new year. So that's my, I don't, I hesitate to call it word of the year, my word of the moment, because that's where my brain is going right now. So <coughs> that's my first, will be my first finish of the new year. Um, and then on New Year's Day, I wanna do a new start. And I looked through some of my kitted projects and I really want to start the Fox from Cottage Garden Samplings. So I have all 12 of these charts. I have the Foxes kitted up and I'm gonna stitch them. I bought the fabric pack from Be Stitch Me. This is a 32 count. This one is gray magic. So 
So I'll be stitching the fox on this and I think the swans and one of the other ones get stitched on it as well. But I want to start the fox. That's a, that's going to be my new year. New year, new start. Is that correct? <laughs> um, and then also for January. So in January, I want to work on the fox. I want to work on my mar March, my Hello March. Um, and then I want to do a couple of Valentine's Day patterns. So I lost my board. Hold on. One that I started last year was from Stitching with the Housewives. I don't have a cover page for it, but this is their Be My Valentine. And this is where I am on it. So I'd like to work on it in January and see if we can make it a finish. So there's that one. Um, I'm stitching that on just a 25 count or sorry, 28 count black Lugano with the called for threads. <coughs> Excuse me. And then the next Valentine's I want to work on is from With I Needle Love Notes. And I started this. Excuse me. At some point, and this is as far as I've gotten. <laughs> so this is that pattern back there. And I was clearly just using some threads that I pulled. I was using a color and cotton that I pulled from my stash. So I would like to get a couple of those done this month. We'll see how it goes. Um, usually I get distracted at some point. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. But that's what I want to do. Next. So I decided this year that I want to give Whipco another go. But I don't want to pick 25 whips to work on. So thinking about the board and how I wanted to set it up, I chose seven projects or topics, I guess, to work on through the year. So if you know the Whipco board, I think it's 25 squares, 24 or 25 squares. Um, so I have seven items to fill that. <laughs> So what I did is I decided like, I'd like to work on an ornament. So I put ornament on my board five times. So, and my goal is three days on each Whipco project, including a Sunday. So for January, the numbers that were called was an ornament and then for bird crush. <laughs> which I'll explain in a minute. So <clears throat> the ornament that I chose for January is from the Jingle Ball. This was their bobble book. So if you don't know, the designers that were at the Jingle Ball each contributed an uh, ornament to this book. And I am going to work on in January cover the pattern. This one from Heartstring Samplery. Jingle all the way. So I'm going to work three days, including a Sunday, because Sundays seem to be the day that I get the most stitching done. So three days, including a Sunday when I can stitch a lot. Theoretically, I can get, I maybe have a finish, at least make really good progress on it. And usually when I do that, where I've made a lot of progress and I'm really close to a finish, I'm going to want to keep working on it. So if I go more than three days, that's perfectly acceptable. There's no rules. <laughs> but I'm going to stitch this on this. I think this is a 28 count Weeks Dye Works gingham linen. And then the called for floss. So that's my ornament. So I'll be working three days on that. And then if I don't get it done in January and ornament comes up again, 
it'll be entirely whatever mood strikes me. <laughs> Either I can keep working on this one, say February if an ornament gets called again, I can keep working or I can start a new one. I mean, I have 12 ornaments here <laughs> and plenty more in my stash. So that's my plan with that. And then my second call of Whipco for this month was Bird Crush. And so if you know, Lindy Stitches last year had her Bird Crush Club, which I stayed a part of all 12 months. So I have 12 bird pattern patterns and I finished one last year. So I have 11 more birds that need to be stitched. And I have most of them kitted up with fabric and threads. So that went on my Whipco board. Um, and so in January, I'm going to work on the whistling ducks. This is the black bellied whistling ducks. So here's where we are. And I don't know why I didn't get this done this year, but here's where I'm at. So the ducks are pretty much done. I just really have the base and then um, like the little bits and pieces around them. So I already brought a frame and everything for this. <laughs> so there's no excuse to why it's not done. And really, if I give it three solid days of stitching in the month of January, I ought to be able to finish the ducks. So that's the goal. So those are two things on my Whipco board, um, bird crush and then um, and an ornament. And then the next thing that I put on there five times was Halloween Rules with Lizzie Kate. I didn't pull the pattern for this, but you guys know what this is, right? <laughs> Here's where I am. So I've stitched the topper and the first two blocks. I forget how many blocks are on here. I want to say nine or 12, something like that. So... <coughs> three days I should be able to finish whatever the next block is and then if this comes up five more times I should make pretty good progress on Halloween rules which you know if there's nine blocks and I finish eight I'm probably going to want to finish that ninth one and call that a finish for the year so that's the goal of Whipco we'll see how it goes the next thing that I put on my Whipco board five times was Hometown Holiday from Little House Needleworks. So last year, probably about the same time, <laughs> I had said that I want to do a bunch of this series and I purchased a bunch of the patterns and I finished one last year. <laughs> so um, the one that I have started is Main Street Station, and this is where I am on it. So, three days, this gets called on Whipco, Main Street Station ought to get finished, at least pretty dang close. And then that'll get called four more times, so who knows, maybe I could have at least five of those um, hometown holiday patterns finished by the end of the year. I don't know, saying that out loud makes it seem a little too ambitious. <laughs> but we'll see how it goes. We'll see how distracted I get. All right, so that's Bird Crush Halloween Rolls, Hometown Ornament, and Ornament. So I have three more things on my Whipco board. The first is Strutting Tom from Lindy Stitches. I put this on my board twice. Um, I worked on this right before Thanksgiving, and this is where I got with that. So, really, six days of Whipco should get me pretty dang close to a finish, if not a finish. <laughs> um, the other two things I put on here... I did not pull out, so I will have to film another video and show them to you. The um, one was the, 
I have it written down as this spooky sow. It's from Luminous Fiber Arts. It was her Halloween sow this year. Um, I had worked on that pretty steadily when it first came out, but for some reason I lost track of it and didn't finish it. So I would really like to finish that. So I put that on my Whipco board. And then the next one was another sow from Hands on Design, her costume party sow that she did earlier this year. I think that sow was only what maybe five days <laughs> so I unfortunately like I'd bought everything for it I had all the floss the fabric I bought the finishing board I have everything for that sal but at the time of the sal I couldn't do it I was too busy with other stuff and just couldn't keep up so I got maybe 10 or 15 stitches done on that one so that's going on my Whipco board and, you know, three solid days of stitching on that. I should get pretty close to a finish. It's not a very big pattern. So those are my Whipco plans. I think in a way they seem a little bit too much, but at the same time, I think it's really doable. It's only six days a month that I'd be working on Whipco and if I really stick to it, I could really have some finishes by the end of the year so we'll see how that goes but those are my whip go plans and most of my year plans I have two more um, whips to sitting here the first is farmhouse Christmas from Little House Needleworks Oops, sorry it's in my cue snap I don't know why I didn't finish this this year. <laughs> it's been lingering for a while, but I have finished six blocks. So there's three more left and I really want it done this year. So I'm keeping it out as an active project and I'm going to work on it whenever the mood strikes me and hopefully get it knocked out this year. And then the last project. <laughs> so I am trying, I've been a member of the Georgia Sampler Guild for a couple of years and I've yet to make it to any of their regular meetings. I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, when I first joined, part of the problem was I was traveling so much for work that they have a meeting, I think it's on Sundays, like maybe the second sun, second or third Sunday of the month. Um, I was traveling so much, I never felt like I could do it. And then, of course, with COVID, I couldn't go to a meeting. Um, I think they did virtual meetings. And then the last year or two, I really don't know what my excuse was, but Sundays just seem a little bit hard to get out of the house. I think part of the problem is that Sundays are usually the only day that Scott and I both are home. And... So like being like, hey, it's nice to see you, but I'm going to go cross stitch for an hour. Sometimes doesn't feel right, <laughs> but I really want to be a more active participant in that group this year. So I've kind of made a tentative goal of um, at least trying to make at a minimum five meetings this year, which, you know, once a month, five months should be doable should be doable. So I have the January meeting written on my calendar. So hopefully I will do it. <laughs> but I did sign up. So the Sampler Guild does what they call a journey um, project. And it's where you literally sign a contract. I mean, it's not like it's an enforceable contract where I'm going to get arrested if I don't stick to it. But you kind of, you make a commitment to a project. So it's either to, um, to finish something and it can be anything. It can be a whip, it can be a new start, it can be a small, um, it can be just stitching. If you're doing a giant project, maybe doing a fade page finish, or if you're doing like a hawker and hollow, maybe like finishing one or two of the blocks. 
it's you commit to whatever you want to. And so I decided um, just this week <laughs> that I was going to work on a journey piece. So I have until October of 2023 to finish. And what I chose as my journey piece is Slackbird Designs Seasons. So it's the summer, winter, autumn. I'm stitching them all as one. When I pulled this out of the bag the other night, this is about what I had done on it. <coughs> I had really just this corner. So I stitched on this for, I think, two days this week. And I've gone all the way down to the bottom border on summer. And I'm loving it. It's a great stitch. So I had this kitted up for my birthday back in May of 2020. So it has been a lingering around for a couple of years. And for some reason, I just don't pull it out and work on it. So I'm going to try to change that this year. So this is my journey piece. Um, we'll see. I feel like it's really doable. It's not that big of a project and I have until October. So my thoughts are it's three blocks. So if I kind of give myself, you know, like January, February, March, April, May, June, and then a little buffer between this, but theoretically I could have this done by June, which would be fantastic. And I don't know, maybe I should make it a goal to try to have it done before my next birthday in May. So <laughs> we'll see. Maybe not put too much pressure on myself, but um, that kind of kills two birds with one stone. I get, I finish a whip that I've wanted. I've loved that pattern forever and I would love to have it done. And it maybe makes me participate a little more in the sampler guild. So those are the plans. So I didn't, I have a little bit of haul here, but these are things that have come in recently that I'd like to start in 2023. I'm sure I'll start more than this, but <laughs> let me show you. So this is from the Blue Flower. This is her winter quail. I love this pattern. Like as soon as I saw it released, I wanted it. <laughs> And I've kitted it up with all the called for silks. So I really want to do it. Um, and then, you know, at Christmas time, when everybody pulls out their Christmas stitching and they start showing things and I'm like, oh, I want to stitch that so bad. This is one that hit me this year. This is the Prairie School or Christmas Village. I love this pattern. And so I would like to start it. I don't know. What's the size on this? It's 222 by 170. So it's a big one. But I might stitch it on like a 46 count. So I did decide that I am going to do a fabric of the month this year. And I'm doing it through the Farmer's Attic, which is a... I think they only have an Etsy shop, but they are doing a, a combination of Atomic Ranch and Rogue Stitching fabrics, I believe. Um, and so I signed up for a 46 count to just kind of get some more of that into my stash. And I like stitching on 46 count. So We'll see. We'll see what comes in from that and maybe one that comes soon will work well for this. And then the other ones are just newer charts that have come recently. I got the new two of the new Plum Streets. This is Christmas Mini Moon and My Heart's Welcome, which is a big blue house but I love these. It's trying to focus on my face. <laughs> and then the last one I have is from Lottie Da. 
This is Be Merry All, which I just think is adorable. Clearly, I have a bird theme going. <laughs> and then, just to top that off, I, th I think I can show this now. It's been long enough. Um, as part of the bird, Lindy Stitches Bird Crush, <coughs> if you were a part of the club all year in December, you got a kind of a bonus chart, and this was the bonus chart. This is Armchair Ornithologist. And so it's got all the little birds that have come out this month. So there's the duck. Isn't it cute? I just, I can't get, it's so cute. She's so talented. I love Lindy, <laughs> or Stephanie, but I love Lindy Stitches. So I have it kitted up with all the DMC. It's a lot of colors. This is a lot of birds, but I would like to start that this year and get some progress on it. So those are the plans. We'll see how it goes, but it's been nice getting back on here. Um, hopefully I'm finally catching up with some of my work and just life stuff. So I've got, I, I think I've mentioned before that I am the primary caregiver for my mother. Um, she lives with me. But she left middle of November. She flew out to spend the holidays with my sister. And so she is going to be gone hopefully through February. <laughs> I know that sounds terrible, but it's been a really good break for me and Scott to just kind of have that break away from all that. Um, but that's another the, one of the mindsets that changes that I need to have next year is I really need to start enjoying the time that I'm able to spend with my mom. Um, it's way too easy to get overwhelmed in just being a caregiver. Um, it can be hard work sometimes <laughs> and <laughs> a lot of, um, I don't know, a lot of stress and just kind of fighting with her about things that we shouldn't be fighting about sort of things, you know? It's tough caring for an elder parent. And so this break has been really nice and hopefully I'll go into the new year with kind of a better attitude towards it when she comes back. But that's that. I'm gonna unsubscribe from all that negativity in the new year. <laughs> the plan anyway. We'll see how it goes. But in the meantime, I hope you all had a very happy ho holidays and that you're all healthy. Um, I'm going to get healthy in the new year. <laughs> I'm so tired of having a cold and being sick. So that's the plan and happy new year and hopefully I will talk to you all soon.